Hey everybody, it's Nate coming at you from Ranch Foods Direct. Today we're going to be making a chili recipe that's our collaboration with Matt Schnipper and uh, Gather Food Studio. We've got a, a nice recipe that's online, easy to follow. Make sure you read your recipe at least a couple of times. Make sure you've got everything all lined up and make sure you understand the directions. So to start off with, we're going to roast a couple of poblanos and a jalapeno pepper. I'm doing this with a gas burner and a grate over the top of it. If you don't have a gas burner, you can use a broiler in your oven. Or if you don't want to do that, you can absolutely buy canned uh, chili peppers. Just a suggestion. There's a couple of different kind of peppers. You can buy those and throw those in its place if you want to. While those are roasting, I'm actually going to start doing some chopping. Start with our uh, garlic here. You get that, I'm just gonna put a bench scraper right on top of it, smash it. Makes it easy to chop. Next, I've got a whole onion. I'm gonna dice this fairly small. So I've got this uh, chipotle and adobo sauce. You can buy those in fairly small cans. There's gonna be probably a dozen uh, the little peppers in there. Um, you can save those for another time. Uh, put them in a Ziploc bag, throw them in the freezer, save them for the future. I'm just gonna mince these up. All right, next uh, I've got some 100% uh, dark chocolate. You can generally find this in the baking aisle. We're just going to kind of shave this and chop it up. Check on our pepper, make sure we're doing all right. Got to make sure to get the sides. Kind of move it around, make sure you're getting any spots that weren't charred. Now that we're all charred, we're actually going to cover this with some ceramic plastic bag. Let that steam, and the, the charred bits will just peel right off. See here in a few minutes. While those peppers finish steaming in the bowl, we're going to get started on the ground beef. I'm going to start with a couple of tablespoons of butter. You can use oil as well. The recipe calls for oil, but I don't have any available, so I'm going to use a couple of tablespoons. That started melting down. Then we got one pound of 80 20 ground beef. Just kind of, kind of break it up in there, make it easy. I'm going to add just a little bit of salt and pepper to this. Just a pinch each. And also a little bit of that uh, chili powder that we got from Gather. Our uh, beef is done browning. We're going to evacuate this and then drain off the fat a little bit, dump it into a bowl. We want to leave the fat in there because we're going to cook our onions and garlic and everything else in that wonderful beef fat and butter. Onions are going in. I want to keep the heat kind of low because we're not looking to necessarily brown these onions. We just want to get a nice sweat off. While that's sweating, I'm going to pull these peppers, get them diced. As you can see, the skin just comes right off. It all got burned off in the char.
It doesn't have to be perfectly clean. You just want to get most of that black skin off. So I'm going to cut off the stem end off of all of them. I don't want that going in. Split them open. Just take the chunky bits of the pith out. And leave some of the seeds. We want a little bit of heat from them. out like little blankets and the jalapeno if you want it to be a little spicier you can leave the pith and the seeds alone I like it I like the flavor of jalapenos not so much the heat so I'm gonna kind of scrape most of it out and get that off to the side and then we're going to do a nice small dice on these See the onions are starting to get a nice sweat. They're getting kind of translucent, about where we want them to go. Get a little bit more, and then we'll add the garlic. Our peppers and onions are sweated down, looking pretty good. Gonna add the uh, chipotle pepper and adobo sauce. And then the garlic. And we're gonna Cook this for just a little bit until the garlic starts to get fragrant. Have to be careful with garlic, it will burn very quickly, especially when it's minced like this. So we're gonna just keep an eye on things, keep the heat kind of a medium low. I'm gonna add, I have a quarter teaspoon or a half teaspoon of cumin. I'm gonna add that now as well. So that kind of wakens up. I'm also gonna add a little bit of the chili powder to this at this point. So now all the smells are starting to come out. You can smell the garlic a little bit. You can smell the chili powder and the cumin. We'll just let that kind of cook for just a moment. Now I'm gonna add the tomato paste. It's got about four ounces of it here. The small cans are about five and a half ounces. You can add the whole thing if you want. but we're just gonna stick to four ounces. I kinda get this a little brown. All right, now I'm gonna deglaze the pan with the beer. Nice oat stout from Bristol Brewing. Make sure I'm scraping up all the little bits on the bottom of the pan. We want all that in the chili. the rest of the tablespoon of chili powder that I had. We'll probably add a little bit more towards the end or throughout the cooking process. Kind of adjust the taste to what we want it to be. Now I'm gonna add the vegetable juice. The ground beef is going back in. Turn the heat up a little bit because I want to bring this to a boil and then I'll reduce it down to the simmer. The fire roasted diced tomatoes, got about 28 ounces of those total. Now I'm going to pour most of my kidney beans in now, but I'm going to retain about half a cup 
that I'm actually going to mash so we can use that as a thickener if we need to towards the end. And the dark chocolates. I'm going to keep an eye on this and keep kind of stirring it while the chocolate is melting. I don't want it to just kind of sit there and clump together. I'm mashing that half cup of uh, kidney beans that I kept to the side so it's ready as a thickening agent towards the end. You can use cornmeal or masa as an alternative to these beans, but I figure since we're already using the beans in the recipe, why not save some of them and use them just in case. The chili has come to a boil. I'll stir it up a little bit here. We're going to reduce the heat down. Put the lid on. Let that go for a couple hours. Check it every 30 minutes or so and just see how it comes out. All right, our chili has been cooking for about an hour. It will definitely get better as time goes on, but it is done now. It looks great. So the chocolate that I used was 100% cacao, so there was no sweetness to it. So it kind of made the chili taste a little um, muddy. I added a couple tablespoons of apple cider vinegar and just a little bit extra salt and brightened everything back up. So if, you're, if you do the same thing and it kind of tastes one note or kind of muddy, consider adding, adding a little bit of uh, apple cider vinegar. But here we go.